Welcome back everyone. You know, I feel like it flew under the radar, but the Lakers signing Torian Prince was kind of underrated, and especially when you factor in them getting in for only around $4 million. I mean, I get it, he was not a big name addition to their team. The casual fan doesn't really know about him, and that is why guys like Christian Wood, Gabe Vincent, and even Cam Reddish have gotten more attention. However, I for one do not agree with it. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that Torian Prince was their best free agent addition by any means, but I really do believe that he was an underrated pickup for them. Unlike many of their other players, Torian Prince can offer value in many different areas. He is definitely not a one-trick pony, and that could lead to him being a go-to option for Darvin Ham within the rotation. But with all of that in mind here, what would be the best way for them to utilize Torian Prince, and how will he fit within the rotation once they figure him out? We are going to talk about all of that in today's video. But real quick before we get into it, if you are looking for non-Lakers related NBA content for me, then be sure to check out my second channel, JSM Plus. We really try our best to talk about every NBA team over there, so if you are a fan of the entire NBA and not simply a Lakers fan, then I guarantee that you would enjoy it. I'll leave a link to check it out in the video description down below. But without wasting any more time here though, let's dive right into it. And I think the first thing we need to talk about is the role that he'll fill for them, along with whose role that he'll be taking over. And while there might be a few people who feel differently about it, I think the widely agreed upon role for him is playing around 20 minutes per game off their bench, and then the player that he'll be replacing happens to be Troy Brown Jr. But not only will Torian Prince be replacing Troy Brown Jr., but Troy Brown will be replacing Torian Prince back in Minnesota. Kind of funny how that worked out, but I think the Lakers got the more reliable role player here. And don't get me wrong, I really did like Troy Brown Jr., and was truly impressed by the mini breakout that he had for them, though I'm much more confident in Torian Prince. Purely in regard to reliability here, Torian Prince has a much better track record. He has been a productive role player in the NBA for over 7 years now, and when compared to Troy Brown who has only 1 or 2 years of real productivity, I would feel much better about having Torian Prince. And although the Lakers kind of had to over rely on Troy Brown due to their lack of wing depth, that is no longer an issue with their current group, which will likely put the magic number for Prince at around 20 minutes per game of action. And I believe that will help them take advantage of what Prince does well on the court, while at the same time not overdoing it to the point where his weaknesses become a problem, and that's pretty much the goal when it comes to role players. But now that we got the minutes part figured out here though, let's talk about what he'll provide them from an on-court standpoint, and the number one thing that they'll be looking for from him is reliable 3 point shooting. Again, Prince will be replacing Troy Brown Jr. here, who believe it or not shot a career high 38.1% from 3 for them, and then 40.5% from the corner, where roughly 40% of his 3 point shot attempts came from. And if we then compare that to what Torian and Prince did last season, it's nearly a 1 to 1 comparison. They literally had the exact same 3 point shooting percentage, and nearly attempted the same amount of them per game as well. But if we then take a look at corner 3 specifically, here's where Torian and Prince has Troy Brown beat. He shot 43.2% compared to Troy Brown's 40.5%, and then it's a career average of 41.7% from the corner. And much like Troy Brown Jr. found out last season, you will get plenty of wide open corner threes while playing with LeBron and Anthony Davis, which will be the exact kind of role that Torian and Prince will be stepping into for them. And if he is able to replicate, if not even improve upon what Troy Brown Jr. did, then I believe that he will give the Lakers everything that they are looking for here in regard to offense, which they definitely will need by the way. I know I've talked about it before, but they do not have a whole lot of reliable 3 point shooting ability on their team. I think they have just enough after adding Christian Wood, but that will depend on if Prince himself, along with D'Lo, Reeves, and Wood can maintain their 3 point shooting from last season. And with Torian and Prince being the only bigger wing player among them, that will be something they look for him to do consistently. They likely won't be getting that from Jared Vanderbilt, nor Rui Hachimura, and especially not from a high volume 3 point shooting standpoint. Now I think there's a pretty good likelihood of those two improving, but I really doubt they will become high volume shooters, and whenever the Lakers need more of that on the court, that will be when they turn to Torian Prince. And I think that should be the next thing we talk about. How will Torian Prince be mixed in with Vanderbilt and Hachimura? Will he play more with them, or play more without them, and then potentially take away minutes from them? In my opinion, it will likely be a little bit of both here. But the number one thing that Torian Prince has going for him is that he is less matchup dependent than either of them. 
Unlike Vanderbilt who has 3 point shooting issues, or Rui Hachimura who has trouble defending quicker wing players, Torian Prince is kind of a mix of both. He is both a reliable 3 point shooter, and then a good enough defender to hold his own against the majority of wing players. Now I don't think it'll happen every game, nor anywhere close to it, but I think there could be matchups where he plays more than either of them, and potentially even finish the game for them too. I love what Vando and Hachimura bring to their rotation, but neither of them are true 3 and D wing players like Tori and Prince. Again, everything is matchup dependent, but there will be a time and place for Prince within their closing lineups. I know we don't really tend to think about that, but it could very well end up happening more than we think, whenever they aren't matching up with an elite wing player that they would need Vanderbilt for, and then if Rui Hachimura is not shooting the ball well, that would be when they turn to Prince. No, he definitely won't bring the same kind of defense that Vanderbilt would, but he still can match up with a majority of players 2-4, through four. and then while he won't provide the scoring ability that Hachimura can, he does provide more reliable 3-point shooting. I tend to think of it more as adding to the rotation rather than taking away from what Vanderbilt and Hachimura do well. They will obviously be getting their fair share of minutes within the rotation as well, but let's not forget about Tori and Prince here too. To me, he will bring a lot of balance to their forward rotation. They have a lot of forwards who are either really good on offense or defense, but very few of them who can do both at an above average level. I mean, you can make an argument that Torian Prince is the only one that qualifies for both at this point. Vanderbilt is more defensive minded, LeBron and Hachimura are more offensive minded, and then the same would apply to Cam Reddish. Their only other guy who might qualify for being a two-way player would be Max Christie. Don't get me wrong here, they all have their moments on both ends of the court, but I would call Torian Prince the most well-rounded of them all, and there's something to be said for a guy like that too. I mean, who knows, maybe he will be affected by the dreaded Lakers 3-point shooting curse, or take a step backwards on defense, but at this current moment I would call him their most reliable 3 and D wing. Again, no, that likely won't lead to him getting more minutes than either one of Vanderbilt or Hachimura, but it will give Darvin Ham another option within their rotation, and that might lead to Prince getting the call over them during certain matchups. But to wrap everything up here though, I really do like the addition of Tori and Prince. I know not many people are talking about him, but he could very well end up being a sneaky good addition to their team. Whether we are talking about offense or defense, Prince can add value to their rotation, and that's something that very few wing players can do on a regular basis. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the addition of Torian Prince? And then how do you think he will fit within the Lakers rotation? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.